Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jen, GR Mom, joined over distance by GR Dad. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. <laughs> I am Jen, GR Mom, joined as always. <laughs> Fuck, I did it wrong again. One more time. <clears throat> hi, everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jen, GR Mom, joined over distance by GR Dad. Hi. <laughs> How's it going, dear dad? Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really far away. <laughs> I think you've done that joke before. No, this is this is new humor. <laughs> I am in Maryland. Dear dad is in Florida. However, when we woke up this morning, I was in Florida <laughs> and dear dad was in Maryland. And I got to say, having assessed both places today, uh, Florida is the winner. Yeah. Shit, I, tomorrow, I hope I don't know where I'm going to wake up. Maybe I'll still be in Florida. Who knows? <laughs> as long as you're with the dogs, everything is okay. Everything is okay. They're all uh, doing their miscreanting. Yes. The cocktail of the week this week is the Velvet Buccaneer. Ooh, I like That's it. A good name. We didn't do this one already, did we? Not that I know of, although the title is awesome. I mean, I picked it. Now I gotta check the cocktail of the we week. We did a list. buccaneer uh, a little while ago, but it, I don't think it was a valid buccaneer. We did the blueberry buck. That's that's not that the same. Like the only thing. Okay, so the velvet buccaneer is high proof bourbon. Ooh, how high? Velvet falernum. Mm. Uh, you know, as high as you want, I guess. I guess all spice dram and lime juice. I made this cocktail that's for us, it, but I don't think we actually familiar. did it on yeah, the yeah, list. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tasty drink. Um, it reminds me when I was a, a little kid, my dad used to tell this joke that was like both Midwestern and utterly perplexing to me as a child, which was how much do they charge for an ear of corn in Tampa Bay? Oh, a buccaneer. See, I would have changed it to pirates or something. How much does the pirate charge? Anyway. That's pretty good. But you had no idea Tampa Bay Buccaneers existed. Nor did I know what a Buccaneer was. Sure. I like barely could process like he was saying a, it costs a dollar for an ear of corn, which I know is a lot because I think he used to say how much like ear of corn was supposed <laughs> to cost 10 cents because that's something you're real tuned into in the Midwest where oh I grew my God. up. Um, but he thought that was a really funny joke. And I'm sure my brother and I laughed at it a lot, but we had absolutely I want to talk. I want to talk. My brother, I had no fucking idea what it meant. And he never explained uh, but, it. It's not like he, he sat, sat down and was like, here's why this is funny. I was like six. Well, I, I just I laughed at it. I guess that's all he needed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's a tasty drink. Kind of tiki, but bourbon. Yeah, it sounds... It's Yeah, it's it doesn't taste like gimmicky or anything. It's very good. Very balanced. No, it's, it's great. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Time for administrative corner. Oh, I love administrative corner. Great, great, great. Yay. I know you. Oh, no, I just broke my microphone. Yay. Oh, my God. <laughs> the things are not going well today. Just for me and the podcast. We've got to release trouble. the okay. videotape of this. Is this is videotaping? Uh, <laughs> it is. Is it, yeah. is it on YouTube? <laughs> uh, I could post it for the super followers. Because it's a disaster right now. <laughs> I mean,. Like my face, you can kind of see, and then we can just see your leg and then vink. I, I mean, that's actually like pretty good camera. footage. <laughs> it's okay. It's good. It's exactly on brand with how, how our week is going. I can flip the phone. Okay. <laughs> oh, Lord. This is okay. old school. <laughs> no, don't do that. Okay. Turn it back around. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> there we go. Okay, good. All right. Uh, thing number one on administrative corner. Um calendars did we talk about calendars last week um yes they're excellent and i've ordered several yeah we did you, that's right we did talk about this last Mine week have okay arrived. so that's great uh if you want a calendar just look at the link in our bio and you can get one um if you have a dog person in your life you can buy my book for those who have been following the saga of jen's disappointment with the new york times bestseller list i do have data um, you can skip ahead 15 seconds if you don't want to hear this. Our book sold like 6,000 copies in the first week, which is like very good. Um, the previous week, like before our book came out, the bottom item on the New York Times bestseller list sold 6,100, which would have been very sad. But the week our book came out, the bottom seller sold 7,500. So we were substantially short 
of the total that we would have needed for that. It's just so. such a lower number than I would have expected, right? That's like reachable. Except it's not. Does it matter that the first me. two books are like million sellers with freaking Britney Spears and Britney Spears has sold a lot of fucking Fonz books. Yeah. And is it Barbara Streisand's up there too? I mean, anyone's going to yeah. buy stuff with them. There's a we came out on a really tough week for sure. Yeah, it, we didn't sell quite enough to make it even on a normal week. So uh, anyway, that's that data. Everyone um, tried, and I appreciate all the followers who bought one, two, or multiple books. <laughs> a lot of a few people bought like ten, and they're all very nice. Three. Uh, everybody tried. Three. Well, I did too. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm, I mean, I'm no slouch. <laughs> Oh, you're amazing. You, I don't even know how many books you bought. You Me, bought them from all kinds of different places. They trickled places. in from all over the place, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, oh, my mic is moving farther away from me. <laughs> <laughs> my setup is not ideal here. Okay, uh, item number two on Administrative Corner. We have a fish scandal update. Wow. Hermitage fisherman who cheated in tournament headed to trial for alleged deer poaching. Ooh. So this is our friend Chase Kaminsky. And by friend, I mean this guy that we like to make that fun of. That guy is a, re he's, a rep pro <clears throat> he's a repeat offender on many things. He cannot keep a hermitage his nose clean. Man. No, he sure cannot. He was convicted, as we know, of the weights and fish case. Yeah. Um, we talked a few weeks ago that he wasn't allowed to have a deer license because he poached and then he got caught um poaching more deer <laughs> so yeah. he he caught eight charges um alleging that between 2013 and 2021 he harvested several white-tailed deer out of uh, season and without a license um kaminsky's wife told game officials that she never killed a deer even though she had a deer license claiming that her husband brought down the animals using guns or crossbows so, like, she he couldn't get a license, so she'd get him, and so then she, he'd go hunt deer. She wasn't going to take the heat him for, for him. She basically refused no. to flip. He, she's he's the guy who like stalked that poor woman like home from her job and got arrested for that after yeah. the weights and fish thing. So, like, was the there something be... where he like stole stuff with his son? No, okay, did check with his son. Uh, that was committed. Um, counterfeit bills. Yeah, counterfeit right? bills with the son at the bowling alley. That's also, yep, this yeah, the same yeah, guy. Yeah. Well, he's a winner. So, yeah, but I guess if the wife yes. had said, I killed all the deer, she had a license. Yeah, and it would have been fine. She just would have been lying to the police on behalf of her loser husband. <sighs> she, uh, I'm glad she didn't do that. Yeah. So that's that update. He's going to trial for that. Um, and then item number three is that a bunch of people, people have gotten in the habit of sending me things that they know are going to be upsetting to you, which I do kind of like. <laughs> um, and those... <laughs> Because I'm like, oh, yeah, he's really going to hate that. Uh, and they lately have been taking the form of various food candles, which I know you disapprove of. Yeah. Um, the most recent one that was coming in around the week of Thanksgiving was the gravy candle. <laughs> uh, made in the same way as a butter candle. You take like a paper cup and you fill it with gravy. You put a wick in there and then you take the cup off and then you this light the candle. And you work. dip stuff in this the can't gravy. can't burn. It can't burn on gravy. The ancient people uh, didn't burn gravy at their to to read by the light of the gravy candle. That's not well. Happening. That is certainly true. Butter, I guess that is certainly that's true. like tallow, right? But you can't just burn it. What 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 was that Ben and Jerry's thing? Who did a Ben and Jerry's? Yeah, someone candle? also sent me a Ben and Jerry's candle where it was just like you take a pint and then you put a wick in it and start it there on fire no and then way. like dip stuff in the melty ice cream. There is no way. It was the dumbest. I mean, it wasn't this person's idea. They just saw it and they're like, this will make him go angry. It and did. I was like, yeah, I sure it will. It did. It still is. It still yeah. does. <laughs> Keep sending your I mean, abomination good, food candles good to me. place to focus my anger rather than the boats driving by in my backyard. So that's fine. Keep it, keep it coming. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, good. So that's administrative corner. Oh, that week. was a good one. Uh, oh, and the you know, and the booths continue to arrive and are cute. Yes, talk about your booths. You, I, got I a booth. just have the prototype. You got one. I know it came today. Right, well, because I ordered one because you know I've been told not to order too many, so I only ordered one. Otherwise, then we'd have a whole whole cluster of booths. I mean, we already have. 
Like he's number two because we got the prototype. I know, but he, that's the collective now, and I think a cluster of voods. Um, <laughs> he's very cute. Like a cluster of seizures? He's, Wait, they, is that why you picked cluster? No, just a cluster of fucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's he's, good. I like he's, it. He's... Uh, He's very sly looking. He has. They really did a good job of capturing his his sidelong glance, which which was very Thank characteristic. Um, I designed that. I so know. I know you did a good pretty job. Pretty pleased. You did a good job. You're awesome. I'm very proud of myself. Yes, I am. I'm awesome. <laughs> uh, so yeah, those are coming in. I have pulled the Patreon subscribers and the um, Twitter subscribers about who to be next. I was like, should we do? Brody or Guac or Remy or an angel dog. Brody is winning with like 34% of the vote oh. on Twitter. Angel dog is winning on Patreon, but then everybody's very split about which one it should be. So Brody's technically winning there also. But angel dog so, should be a separate vote we'll then, see. right? But it's since it's only getting 40%, like people are commenting and it's like pretty evenly split between like queso oh, yeah. saint patrick and boyfriend sure. and then also a pair for maggie and jasmine which is a great idea but like those would have to be two uh yes you can't make two unless we made a two-handed dog. yeah yeah they're no, so. confused so you do what are you going to no. do about this conundrum <clears throat> i'm going to let people keep voting till tomorrow and then probably pick brody let that be <laughs> <laughs> honestly democracy is complicated i gotta say <laughs> I see. <laughs> All right. It's time for dog updates. Yep. Before we get to Vink, I wrote down feta ice cream cake. Oh, so. All right, you guys. Oh, yeah. For Thanksgiving. <laughs> I forgot what that meant, literally, until I read it off the screen. Uh, so we started this tr sort of tradition in 2021. This is the third year um, we've done it, I think. Yes. Yep. Where... Baskin Robbins will make you an ice cream cake shaped like a roast turkey. <laughs> it's, awesome. it's got little like drumsticks. It's got the little paper fluty things that you put on the end of the leg. It's except it's all ice cream. It's very shiny. Uh, it's brown. I mean, it looks like turkey if you squint. It's kind of chicken um, size. It's pretty big for ice cream. Yes, that's right. It is chicken size. So it's all ice cream. And it's basically like a mound of ice cream with like two ice cream cones stuck on to be like the legs. For the drumsticks. And then they give you little paper fluty things to put on the end of the legs. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, so it's just ice cream and then it's like um, coated in brown frosting and then like a gel icing on top of that to make it shiny. So we had one in 2021 and it was super fun. And then last year we ordered one and Inga went to pick it up and they're like, well, the lady who does that um is gone today and so we could give it to you next week and we're like it's for thanksgiving so <laughs> thanksgiving we did not eat it people this year i ordered it in october <laughs> for pickup the day before thanksgiving and i was like who knows if there's going to be a turkey there but there was what'd you and do and it was delish you called him no no i i did it there's like a, you can order online i thought you called him and they were disconnected Oh, I did try to call before I went to pick it up. I did try to call to make sure they had it, but then the number is disconnected. So I just showed up. I, I was like, well, we're going to have a little adventure. It was there. So why is the best number disconnected, Jen? Who knows? Yes. Uh, anyway, we, we got our ice cream cake. It was cookies and cream. So the dogs couldn't have any, but Feta got like a tiny little lick of the fork. And we discovered that when Feta has sweet things, she glitches. So she like backs up. And then she like chatters her teeth. I know. And she like does a little Real like fast. super smiley grin. Like pulls her lips back, chatters her teeth. It's very weird. <laughs> yeah. We're going to catch it on video. Like we got to do it in daylight and like let her lick a little bit of honey off a finger or something. And yeah. She'll, yeah. I think do it like crazy. Uh, but that was a new discovery. I don't know. That was weird. Pops used to do that with chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yes, she sure did. Because she'd lick our mouth and then there was chocolate and she'd be like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It's the yeah. best. Fry your little brain. That is a, a uh, pet a squeak, by the way. She's in the crate. She's very happy. So yep. um, the only other feta news is that she got a little abscess around um, where she had the sutures for her spay. So she got a little quick visit to the vet and some antibiotics, and that cleared that up. So that's fine. They love her. Um, 
Yeah, but Vink is the main news for the week. So Indeed. since we recorded last time, um, we got her initial test results back that shows that she does indeed have lymphoma that looks like B cell lymphoma, which is the most common kind. It is the sort of medium aggressive kind, um, not what Remy has, which is T zone lymphoma, which the oncologist was like, wow, your dog Remy really hit the lymphoma jackpot. And I was like, no kidding, man. <laughs> Lazy like, lymphoma. Um, there's also T cell lymphoma, which is much more aggressive. So we're pretty sure that what she has is B cell lymphoma, which is the medium aggressiveness, but it will still has a prognosis of like four to five weeks if you don't treat it. So we got that on Friday. We got those results and yeah. Vink had an appointment for Tuesday, Which is Black like Friday, yesterday. Right? Am, I, am I wrong? That was the day after yes, Thanksgiving. Yes, Black yep. Friday. Yep. That's right. So Vink had an appointment for yesterday up here in Maryland to get her elbows looked at. And, um, you know, Wingo was going to drive on Sunday. And so we were like, you know, should we bring her up for that? Should we wait for the oncologist? And I believe I said, quote, there's no way the oncologist, who's not even in the office today on a Friday, is going to get her in on Monday. So you may as well take her up to Maryland. And then we're so used you know, to the we'll keys. Yeah. I mean, you just, just everything's going to take a while. And so we all agreed on that. And then Saturday, the animal cancer care clinic called and they're like, um, can you bring her in Monday to Fort Lauderdale? We've got a spot. And I was like, we sure can. No kidding. I, I didn't look at my schedule. I didn't look at yours. I was just like, we will make that happen. And, uh, so I had a kind of miraculously pretty free day. And so I drove her up to Fort Lauderdale, which is a kind of another hour past Miami, mm -hmm. um, depending. So it was about four hours each way. And Ingo flew to Maryland to do the other stuff that you were going to do here. But I brought her up to Fort Lauderdale. Dentist. Um, <laughs> dentist. I had to go to yeah, the dentist. Trust the local dentist. I got a local haircut no. and they suck. I don't want them doing that to my teeth. I went one time to a local dentist in Key West. Oh, my God. Because I thought I had a cavity. I had a tooth that was sore. Um, it turns out it's because I was grinding my teeth. But I was pretty sure I had a cavity. So I went in and he was, you know, doing his x-rays and I was chatting with him. And I was like, yeah, you know, I had, you know, really bad fillings as a kid. I've had a couple root canals to, like, fix problems that came from those. And he was like, well, I don't believe in root canals. Like, once a tooth is breached, it, you know that's it. You, I just pull them. And I was like, cool, I'm leaving. <laughs> I also didn't have a cavity, but I was like, no, he was the best reviewed dentist in Key West. He was so I was butcher. like, cool. I'm just going to see my dentist when I'm up in Maryland because we have a great dentist here. I'm, I'm starting to feel like fine. that we with all essential services. <laughs> I mean, I've flown up here to get a cavity filled before, but normally it's just the every six months. Yeah, it's fine. I'm, I mean, we do love our dentist too. That that helps, but still. Yeah. Uh, she's great. If you're in the DC area, Purple Plum Dentistry in Falls Church, they're awesome. Yep. We drive to Falls Church for it, which for those of you in DC who know <laughs> the distance between Silver Spring and Falls we, Church. We go through two states to get there. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so Inga flew to Maryland. I drove up to Fort Lauderdale. Um, the oncologist there was great. She's, Vink is actually going to, start seeing the same oncologist as Remy in Miami. So we don't have to do an extra two hours of driving each way, but it was great to get her in. So um, her blood work looks good, which is great because if the lymphoma is more advanced, it can and will get into organs. And mm -hmm. so then you would see problems in the blood work with that. So her blood work all looks good, except her thyroid's a little low. So we're checking to see if she has hypothyroid and we may treat that separately. Um, so blood work is good. They did chest x-rays because a common way that cancer metastasizes in dogs is into their lungs, but her lungs look great. So that's also good. Good job, Bing. Um, They gave her a dose of a medicine that you looked up and you said it looks like asparagus, yeah. the name. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, like an anti-cancer drug, they gave her a dose of that in the clinic while we were there and started her on prednisone, which is really common. And so she had that on Monday. And then we are starting something called the CHOP protocol chop, uh, chop, next like, Wednesday. Like C-H-O-P. 
C-H-O-P. Um, the P stands for prednisone and the C-H and O stand for three different drug names that I cannot pronounce. Oh, it's not C uh, they're for chemo? Big... No, uh, oh. it's, they're, they're all three chemotherapy drugs. Oh. Um, so the way that the CHOP protocol works is that like week one you give, I don't remember which letter it is, but I think the C and week two you give the H, week three you give the C, and week four you give the O, and then you take a week off. She's taking prednisone the whole time. And um, and then you repeat that four times. So it's five weeks, five weeks, five weeks, and then four weeks because you don't have to take the week off once you're done, right? So it's a 19-week protocol. So for the last two rounds, you can actually do them two weeks apart. So they either call it CHOP 19 or CHOP 25 because it's 19 weeks or 25 weeks, depending on how you space this stuff out. Oh. Um, they use this, the CHOP protocol on people too, I believe. Sounds like one of those um, workout tapes. PX90, CHOP19. Yeah. <laughs> CHOP19. Yeah. <laughs> um, so 90% of dogs go into remission on the CHOP protocol. That would be cool. um, they gave Vink that injection, and they're like, she could go into remission this week from this injection. Like, that's not uncommon. And Ingo, did you feel her lymph nodes? I haven't yet, no. I've been carrying her, but I haven't been palpita pal palpitating her while I'm carrying her because she hates that. They, uh, so they said on Monday, like, give it 48 hours and you'll likely see a big difference in her lymph nodes. And I was feeling around for them, and I could barely feel the ones in the back of her legs this morning. That is where they were huge. Like, yeah, they were the size of, like, strawberries Yeah. last week. Um. So she could be in remission already, but you still have to do chop for it. Such a relief. So, so good that they're knocking it yeah. back, fighting it. Yeah. So 90% of dogs will go into remission from the chop protocol. 50% um, of dogs will survive for a year. will stay in remission for a year. They can do chop again if, like, once they come out of remission. Um, but it, it seems like it isn't as effective the second time. Chop, chop. Um, yeah, you could. I mean, I guess we'll find out. But so 50% of dogs stay in remission for a year. 25% of dogs stay in remission for two years. 5% of dogs stay in remission for three years. And if you do that, they call you cured. Cured. They're like, you don't, it doesn't really get, you don't, can't really cure lymphoma. They're like, we say if you make it three years, like we're going to call it cured. Um, and I was like, well, we have a habit of beating expiration dates. So we're going to go for that 5%. And she said, you know, the way that we, go for that five percent is that we really stick very strictly to the protocol so we don't miss any days you know if we have to shift it by a day we can but we're like really doing it um we don't adjust any of the doses and that ultimately depends on like how she tolerates it so dogs tolerate chemo way better than people but if she were to start like vomiting a lot where they can't control it they might switch up the drugs I think there's one drug that they can change out for something else. Um, you know, there's just different stuff depending on how she reacts that they might have to change. But the hope is that even if she doesn't feel great, we can stick to the protocol for the 19 weeks or 25 weeks or whatever we have to do. So that gives her the best chance of, you know, making it longer. What's 19 weeks? Five months? Five months. Check my map. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Four or five months. That's right. All right. Well, I think. Uh, so it's weirder. weekly, basically. Um, you know, there's there's the off week, but it's like 16 weeks of injections, right? For or of of administrations. Um, the first four weeks, we have to bring her up to the oncologist every week. So uh, starting on Wednesday afternoon next week, Ingo is driving her up to Miami. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to do the first two because I'll be gone. Yeah. And then you'll be gone for the fourth one, so I'll do it. Um, and then assuming it all goes well the first round, one of the doses or two of the doses out of the four are just pills. So Ooh. they're like, your local vet can probably administer those. Like, I think she needs to be observed a little bit so they wouldn't give them to us. Um, but I think some people do actually give them at home but you got to be like super careful right you can't touch it and like just it's fine with me if we take her into dr faith to do it yeah um 
but it could be they you know they were saying depending how she does that it may be for like two of those four weeks in each of the remaining three rounds we could actually do the stuff locally so we would only have to bring her up kind of every other week or even every fourth week if we space them out like two weeks apart for the last two rounds so it's going to be a lot of trips up to the mainland for sure but it is worth it gotta do what we gotta do i mean bank needs bank needs are mad sure does so that's the plan that's a great plan i'm just so pleased that they they like You've got the diagnosis on Friday, and by Monday she's already had the the like serious sledgehammer shot. Yeah, it's great. And so she's overall doing pretty good. Um, she hasn't had any vomit. You know, they sent us home with serenia, which is an anti nausea, and flagell, which is an anti diarrheal. She hasn't had any problem. She's eating fine. Yeah. Um, she's on prednisone, which makes you hungry and thirsty, and she has both of those things. Um, but Overall, I mean, she's maybe a little more tired than she was, though she's kind of a lazy dog. <laughs> she, um, she still jumps for her food, but, I, yeah. you know, and she's a little less interested in playing with Feta. So we've been, I mean, I've had her since Monday, you've been gone, but I've been, you know, trying to keep Feta off of her. She doesn't snap at her or anything, but she, like, doesn't really engage. Yeah. And, like, the best thing was, like, last night, you know, Feta's like, Vink always likes to play with me. And she goes up and like grabs onto Vink's leg and shakes around. And Vink just kind of lays there. And and I, so I kept telling Feta no. And she kind of looked at me. She's like, I understand that you're saying no, but I'm confused. And Guac just like stepped up. He was like, I'm going to play with Feta. Like she's annoying Vink. He was like bringing her toys. He'd get toys out of the toy box and bring them over and like shake them around in front of her. He was like pouncing at her, chasing her around, like punching at her. And she'd like punch back at him. Um, I mean, they played for like a couple hours. Yeah. Chase each other around. I let him outside. They chase each other around the yard. And like Guac doesn't dislike Feta, but he's really like usually very ball focused and like he'll play with her, you know, for a few minutes at a time. Um, But he seemed to me to really be stepping in to hold her attention and play with her and give Vink a break. He's a good big brother. It could be anthropomorphizing, but he, he was doing a great job. It was like exactly what Feta needed. Like she needed somebody to play with and Vink didn't want to do it. And I was making her stop and Guac was like, I will do it. And it was great. Good job, Guac. A little chaotic. I mean, he was spinning around in circles and like pouncing, a lot of barking, <laughs> then Remy's barking. But I was like, you know what? Vink is being left alone. And so it's okay. Yeah, I mean, he is giant. This That's is not fine. his fault that he that he like causes more commotion when he spins. He's a big, big man. True. True facts. So that's it, I think, for dog updates. Um, Brody is good. Remy is good. Guac is a good man. Good big brother. He is a good, good man. Yep. I gave him some extra swims yep. today. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. I didn't really give him any swims because I was very, very Vink focused. Yeah, he liked it. Remy was a little upset, but quickly lost interest. I mean, Remy was inside barking. Whenever Guac's outside and he does a big splash, Remy starts barking inside. <laughs> but usually we can sneak. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We can sneak by if we're just <laughs> like you know, just rolling the ball into the water. If, if Guac jumps, it's almost guaranteed that Remy will bark inside. Yep, that's true. Yep. But it all works. His desperate, like, I'm missing out. I'm and missing FOMO, out. FOMO, FOMO. <laughs> Which is kind of why he barks anyway. I mean, it, you know, it could be excitement, but it could also just be like, you know, FOMO. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, you ready for Taste of the Keys? Yeah. I'm doing this one just because it's got like, uh, so the headline is two arrested on drug charges from Conk Life. It's just got one of those like great cop spreads where they like try to lay out all the stuff they found, except from a distance. It just looks like some pens and like a notepad, (laughs) (laughs) like some empty baggies. (laughs) Like it's sort of sad. It's not like a bunch of bricks of cocaine or anything. A traffic stop in Marathon Marathon led to the arrest of a man and a woman for drug violations with the female facing more charges after the Sheriff's Office Bureau of Corrections found her to be in possession of a trafficking amount of fentanyl during the jail booking process. 
This case is the result of great work by sheriff's office deputies working to keep our streets and our jails safe, said Sheriff Rick Ramsey. It also belies the importance of the advanced body scan technology we use to keep illegal drugs and weapons out of our detention facilities. Oh. The, sh- the sheriff's office stopped a Chevrolet sedan near 115th Street and Marathon on November 11th at approximately 11- 1147 p.m. There is a strong odor of marijuana emanating from the vehicle. Uh-huh. The passenger, Angeline, 41, of Marathon, was charged with possession of a fent- of fentanyl with the intent to distribute, possession of crack cocaine with the intent to distribute, possession of controlled substances without a prescription, possession of drug paraphernalia, and smuggling contraband into a jail facility. Ah. Approximately 7 grams of fentanyl, 12.6 grams of crack cocaine, and 1.8 grams of powder cocaine were subsequently found inside her body at Lower Keys Medical Center on Stock Island <laughs> following a body scan and search by Sheriff's Office Bureau of Corrections deputies prior to her entry to the jail. Oh, she was trying to... Oh. She probably had them like upper bits. She was like taken to jail and she's like, hey, 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 I'm carrying all my stuff with me. <laughs> and they're like, hey, hey, double hey, hey, hey. We got you. <laughs> we we s- scanned you. Ha-ha. Got him. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, there's that's the driver. A, that's that's bearing <laughs> the lead that that report because that's more interesting than they got stopped in Marathon. <laughs> no, that's right. Uh, she was taken to jail. She had some drugs up her bits somewhere. <laughs> she got caught with a scan. They uh, took her to the hospital. The hospital pulled him out. That's just doubly embarrassing. <laughs> The driver, Aaron, 37, of Big Pine, was charged with possession of 1.9 grams of fentanyl with the intent to distribute, as well as possession of drug paraphernalia, multiple pipes, and a scale. And you can see all of this on Conk Life in the cop picture. Which is like three everything's all laid out. small pills, a scale, and a pen and There's a like a ball of foil. <laughs> they had, they had There's a little Coke spoon. Illegal in it. notebook. <laughs> I don't know what, I guess. Possession of writing utensils. <laughs> There's a lot of foil, which I guess <laughs> must, it's got something on it. It must be drug residue. It could just be oh, like some of these sandwiches think in there. About what they, whether this includes the jail search stuff. Good goodness gracious. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on, cops. <laughs> Don't be gross, gruesome. <laughs> like she had a lot Looks of foil like some in dental her floss. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's a rental trap. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. That's Taste of the Keys. Oh, that's a good one. Yep. What's the uh, German word of the week? I saw this online. It, someone was talking about there's a German word called Telefon. And it, it means a phone that's like a Knäckebrot. I mean, it, it's, it was like, and I was like, that doesn't. Which is a bread. That doesn't, doesn't sound right to me. Knäckebrot is that Swedish, really, is, I think Waza makes it. It's like that really crunchy Swedish bread. Oh, yeah. If you eat too yeah, much of like it, your mouth stuff. hurts. Yep. It like scours your mouth. Yeah, that stuff's delicious Super. with like some smeary cheese on yes, it. Yeah. Super high powered. I, I mean, I think Germans put like, you know, everything on it. They'll put cheese on it, but they'll also put, um, you know, jam and jelly on it and stuff. But also, it scours your mouth if you eat too many of them. Um, I think my parents went to Norway once and were like, oh, we ate so much Knickerbord, our mouth hurts. Um, <laughs> so Knickerbord Telefon actually refers to how many people hold their phone when they're on the telephone. Like they hold it in front of their mouth. You know what I mean? Like a like they're about to yeah. take a bite out of it. Like they're about oh, that's to take a bite out of a, a Kneka board, which is the same shape, right? It's a it's a rectangular I do see people doing that. Yeah. They got it on speaker and then they hold it way up at their mouth. Yeah. Like that. And it's either boomers or young people, depending on who you ask, who do more of that. But I, you know, I don't know what the theory is. You're speaking right into the speaker, I think. I think, the, isn't the microphone on top? <laughs> so it doesn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, you definitely don't need to hold it up. But to your they mouth definitely like that. do. That's funny. I like that. So connected with telephone is just like this weird, describing this weird habit that people have of, of holding their phone weird. I mean, ideally, I you like use, it. You should use headphones because otherwise it's even more rude. It's already kind of, I think it's already kind of rude talking mm-hmm. in public at your phone because invariably it's a little bit, well, not invariably, but lots of times it's more loud than it needs to be. 
you get very loud when you're talking on the phone. Me, you, you I project. totally. Yes, I, I am. Yeah. I am completely guilty of this. I, I mean, all fun and aside, I, I forget that the phone picks up as well as it does. Yeah. Um, but also, you shouldn't have the other side of your conversation being broadcast if you're not using. Correct. If you're That's not true. using headphones, it's just, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, connect up with telephone. I like it. It's a good one. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, time for Ingo Corner, where you can say anything you want. <laughs> uh, I, n- nothing new, nothing new. I appreciate everyone. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for all of your well wishes for Vink. We'll keep you updated every Wednesday with uh, chemo notes. And until next time, Slava Ukraini, and don't bite anyone unless they ask you to. That's right. Bye. Bye.